Hello everyone and welcome back to Java. Today we're going to be talking more about the ACM graphics library and how to use it, what it is, and uh, we're going to be adding on to our knowledge that you got in tutorial number 17. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, you might want to go back and watch this so you know what's going on. We're using the same exact code as last time except I changed two little parameters for width and height of the window to fit an image I'm going to be using as the background. So nothing unusual or strange. Uh, one quick housekeeping thing, uh, sorry the bucket plugin series didn't start this weekend, got really tied up, we're actually writing a plugin ironically enough. Uh, it's called Headhunt, you can check it out on Bucket if you want, it basically adds a new element to PvP of making players uh, bounty hunters with uh, economy rewards through Vault, and um, I'm actually considering making that one instead of Treasure for our first plugin, because it it's a little bit more straightforward and easy to follow I think, but anyhow, that's a whole other story, so we'll talk about that when we have to. But um, basically, today we're back with ACM, and uh, like I said, this is the exact same code from last time. Here, let me close all these, don't need these open. This is the exact same code from last time, except I changed the window width and the window height to um, basically accommodate a image that I'm using as the background. So, uh, real quick, how do you actually, uh, where do you put the images so that you can use them? Uh, your images have to be something like a .ping or a .jpeg or a .gif, something of that nature, an image file format that Java will recognize, and you have to put it in your bin folder here. So I'm in my Eclipse workspace, so if I went backwards, another folder, which I can't because it's a search result, um, but basically, uh, if I went back to the containing folder of Tutorial 18, it'd be my workspace folder, and my workspace folder inside of it has um, each project, as you can see, Tutorial 18 is a project in Eclipse. I can close Tutorial 17. Tutorial 18 is a project in Eclipse, and inside your bin folder is where you put your image. I called it background.ping, and make sure to keep track of capitals. That is a capital B, so we're going to have to use a capital B when we use it in our program. So, uh, don't worry about the other stuff in here. This is a compiled class file, but, um, yeah, this is the, basically, root directory. If you're using BlueJ, it's the same uh, folder that your um, uh, dot bluej file is in, and uh, I think if you're using NetBeans, it's the same thing as Eclipse with the workspace. So that being said, let's get started. So uh, a couple things to do real quick is just make sure our program's still running like we thought it was. So remember, you have to click on it so it focuses, and then you can use your WASD keys in order to move this box around and make it do stuff. Uh, now, that isn't all that useful, and real quick, we need to, uh, I'm going to remove this red box, or actually just make it inactive for a bit. Eventually, at the end of this series, not today's episode, of course, but at the end of the series, we're going to have a working game of two-player Pong with a scorekeeper. So basically, uh, it's going to have two paddles, one's controlled by, like, WS, and the other one by up and down arrow keys, but on opposite sides of the screen and can't cross a certain border, there's at least one ping pong ball, if not maybe two or three. Uh, that could be fun. That go between the actual um, what would they be called? Pal uh, not pallets. Um, paddles on each side, and we're gonna have a nice background image of something, um, just kind of a space type theme. And we're gonna make a simple game of pong. Uh, whenever the opponent misses it and it hits their little goal area, it adds a score. It adds a point to the other team's score up at the top and the game just continues indefinitely. Uh, maybe we could have some kind of end clause at some point. But that's the general idea for what we're trying to accomplish. We already have the basic framework for some of that made uh, with things moving around and whatnot, but um, we need to obviously develop a lot more. So today's tutorial, we're going to add a background image and we are going to add in two little paddles and try to size them right and get those working nicely together and then the next episode, uh, we're going to work on the actual physics of the ping pong ball, um, actually when it hits something, how it reflects off, and that's kind of the really interesting part, because you can do some cool things with like random reflections, like you can make it so normally it follows this path, but one in a hundred times, or one in ten times, or whatever, it reflects all weird, just to kind of throw some random events into the game, stuff of that nature, and uh, we'll be looking more closely at actually doing physics using ACM, which you basically have to do it all yourself. There's not much really provided for you. So with that being said, let's add an image. Uh, you also notice this thing gets to like right around here-ish and then it disappears and goes to the other side. That's because I haven't adjusted the 
uh, distance this goes before it restarts to accommodate the new window size. So let's uh, let's add our new window here, or our new image. So um, ACM uses the uh, G image object to have images, kind of like GRECT, you have um, G image. So we're going to want to add it before we add the rectangles because we want the paddles to be on top of the image itself. So let's figure that out real quick. G image, I'll just call it back equals new G image. And the construction for G image is just passing it a string parameter of the name of the um, image file itself. Now, uh, G image Eclipse, Eclipse give us options. Okay, it doesn't want to. Basically, um, in addition, you could also pass it a uh, Java image um, to create the J image, the G image too. You can do it either way, but uh, uh, the string's a lot easier to use, and we don't have to do a bunch of other code and stuff of importing and making an image icon and sending the image icon to the G image and maybe even um, now nah, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to cast it. But yeah, more than we're worried about doing. So background dot ping. And then we're going to add back. We want to add it before the rectangles again, so it's behind the rectangles. So let's run this, and woo, we have our image. A uh, little bit of explanation as to where I got the image from. Uh, I actually made this a while back for a game that I started developing, ironically enough, in the ACM graphics library. And I just kind of was like, eh, this isn't kind of going as I expected. Oh well, it didn't... Okay, I got bored. So... <laughs> Basically, I just had this image laying around, so I decided to use it. It's um, not like an amazing example of graphics design or anything, but it's plenty for the game we're making, and it certainly accomplishes the general space theme I want this game to have, so we're good. Uh, I was going to remove the title, but I was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> we'll call the game Worldscape. Why not? A little uh, Pong game. So... Uh, we want a panel on each side. We don't want it to have any, uh, like, forward or backward, or, like, left or right, left, okay, right or left, left or right motion. Uh, we would just want it to go up and down. Uh, actually, no, let's have it have left and right up and down motion. And that way we can uh, have, like, a certain boundary here that it can't cross. So today in the tutorial, uh, let's see how much we can accomplish of that, of getting two paddles set up and controlled. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that annoying little red box. I'm going to disable the code for it, and later that will become our ping pong ball, or our pong ball, or whatever you want to call it, our pong square. And um, then we'll worry about physics next episode. So let's stop this. And let's first think about a little bit of aesthetics here. Um, I kind of like the outline type of look, the kind of vector type. So I'm going to actually set filled uh, to false, or just remove this line, because it's by default false. And if we run this now, you'll see our paddle is now an outline. That's all cool and great and everything, but um, we want to change its dimensions. So G rectangle, uh, this is width, so let's do a width of 15, 10, 15, and a height of like 60 or 70. I'll go 60 first and see how it looks. And there we go, that looks like a pretty good Pong paddle. Um, we could have a difficulty setting, maybe that changes how big it is, but for now I think we'll just stick with that, that looks about good. So uh, let's make another one, and have it controlled by the up and down arrow keys. So you'll see all, all I did there was change, was remove the uh, dot set filled true. Why is Blue Jay open? Uh, the dot set filled true to false basically by deleting that line, it's by default false and then we change the dimensions of the rectangle. Why is Task Manager open? So anyway, um, we're going to add a third rectangle. I'm going to call this Paddle 1. Paddle 1. I could do a replace all, but who wants to bother with pressing Control F? Add Paddle 1. And you know what? Yeah, we'll do this. Paddle one and replace. Or, but no, we want to look for rect one and replace it with paddle one and replace all. Ta-da! Yes, no errors. We're good. Um, we don't need acm.util. Yeah, we'll delete that. And it says it does not declare. A, okay, we don't have to worry about that. 
We'll bother with that late. Actually, okay, Eclipse, solve our problems for us. Ta-da. Serial version UID, unique identification. For some reason it likes to have that. It's kind of like a program uh, designation. So L means long. It's a, basically casting one to a long because we are using long here. So whatever, it's happy and it's not yelling at us, so we're good to go. And so let's just run this real quick, see where we were, make sure our, yep, name change worked. So let's change, uh, first of all, where that paddle starts. So we want to add it, uh, set its location to, let's do 30 out and half the window. The height is 562, so 281, I hope, unless I'm really bad at math today. So it looks like that was right at the middle. And to start with, let's um, set direction to, uh, what is, what is um, up, down, left, right, cake. The direction is now cake, which since it's not up, down, left, or right, makes the paddle stay still until we press buttons. And remember, if we pre press any other button but those, it'll, uh, like if we press the space button, it'll stay still. So only the space button, and it'll stay still. And that way we can stop it. So that's nice, and I think that distance looks right about good. Anywhere behind that, like over in this area, uh, will be the actual um, like goal area type thing. So when the pong ball hits that, it's like, okay, goal, you, you, you just lost, you suck at this game. So it'll have that over there on that side, and then on this side it'll have that same kind of region set as that. So, and we'll worry about like the physics with collisions and stuff next episode, of course, for that actual area, but that's what that'll be in the future. So that looks about good to me. I'm going to add the other paddle now. So I'm just going to copy this code and make a paddle 2. Paddle 2, paddle 2. So instead of it being 30 out, we want it to be window width minus 30. And instead of, and yeah, the height's still good. Actually, we could make this window height divided by 2. And same up here. Window height divided by 2. That way, if we change these parameters at any point, we don't have to go through and change all those. It changes them pretty much automatically, which is nice. So let's run this again. And, oh, we forgot to add it. Stupid me. And uh, we will add, where to go? Add... Paddle 2, and actually it doesn't make sense to add Paddle 2 before 1, so let's go down here and paste it there. Okay. Quick mouse work. Keyboard work. Okay, so now we have two paddles, one on each side. And you'll notice we can only control the one on the left. We have to add control in for the right. So, let's also make them different colors. Let's do green and blue. So, I will go right here and do set color blue. And let's run this again real quick. Mm, blue's kind of hard to see. Um, color dot. Let's do yellow, maybe. I don't. Mm, the yellow in this is kind of like a neon. Yeah, that works. I like that. Red, yellow, and blue. Or red, green, and yellow. You know, screw that. I like these colors, so we're sticking with. Yeah, this looks good. All right, so now we got to add control to that um, paddle on the right. So, we can do that actually pretty easily. So I'm going to set this to direction 1. Not one direction, direction 1. And direction 1 will be the direction that paddle is going in. So that's direction 1, direction 1, direction 1, direction 1, and 1, 1, 1, and 1. So that way that direction is the direction that our paddle 1 is going in. And the direction that paddle 2 is going in will be, you guessed it, direction 7. No. Uh, public static string direction 2 equals cake. Really, we could put any word there that's not up, down, left, or right, and it'd work. Let me get a drink of water real quick. We could get any um, uh, string and just put it in there. You know, we could put mouse or keyboard or, you know, stapler or clock or border collie, whatever, in there. Uh, it's just anything that's not up, down, left, or right. And that being said... Direction 1. 
And so actually, instead of one person getting space and the other one having to deal with something like, you know, the right plus button, uh, let's actually change this to being um, like the shift on their side. So left shift, dang it, vk um, dot vk underscore s s s nope shift oh it only it looks like it only gives us one shift maybe let's look at left see what l gives us uh, do, 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 do. left print yeah okay so uh, this person will get let's say um to stop it they get um dot eh, what would be good here uh, Underscore. Hmm. Maybe a control. So let's test that and see if that works real quick. And so moving and I press control and it stops. Moving and I press control and it stops. Okay, I like that. That seems to work. And for this one, let's put it as. Um, let's give this guy shift. So it's kind of, it's, if you look at your keyboard, assuming you have a standard QWERTY uh, US keyboard, uh, WASD is control for the left one, and control, um, kind of like, you know, sprinting in a lot of games and stuff, would be stop. And then for the right one, so you can put your fingers there and kind of see how that would go. And this is more about actually how to do it than getting everything perfectly tuned and going into game theory, of course. But and then for the right person, they'd have up, down, left, and right, and they'd use shift. So it's kind of the person who has to use the arrow keys gets shift a little bit easier so it gets to stop there's a little bit easier so that's the advantage they have actually eh, yeah I, I think shift would be better so then the yellow person gets shift so we'll um, let's control the yellow guy now so um, we took a arrow direction one so case key event dot um, vk underscore okay um I want to say it's VK underscore left. Yep, left. I think that's it. Direction two, not two direction. And left would go left. And break. And let's just see if um, T I O. Bad typing. And um, anyway, now that we have that, let's control the actual movement here. So, if direction 2 dot equals up, actually, you know, I'm just going to copy all this and paste it and change all the direction 1s to direction 2s here. 2, 2, and 2. And paddle 2, 2, 2, yeah, 2, and, it, there it is, 2, and 2, Two, eight, uh, two, not twelve. Um, it, oh, wait, two, one, two, one, two, one to two, one to two. All right, I think we're good. Direction two, paddle two, paddle two, paddle two. All right, so now let's do VK right, up, down, right, and direction equals of course cake, right. And then VK, oops, I'll just, wait, why did I, oh well, who cares, VK, so we did left, right, up, and this will be up, and VK, down, and direction 2 will be, you guessed it, down, and control stops for them, and VK, K, what, what am I doing, wait, no, there we go, wait, extra line, VK underscore shift, and this is stop or cake or whatever. So let's run this real quick. We have our two paddles here, up, down, up, down. They seem to be working fine, although once I start controlling two things on a screen, I get kind of confused for some reason. And I'm trying to get them kind of lined up just for the heck of it. Now, for this one, control stops it. And for this one, shift stops it. Correct. Okay, so our key mapping seems to be good. 
I'm happy with uh, the game controls right now. Uh, aside from the fact that I have to control two Pong paddles because no one else is here to control them. Uh, let's also make sure that left and right, yep, left and right, up, down, stop, left, right, up, down, stop. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, now let's do some boundaries for these things. So let's only move it um, up until it hits the top, down until it hits the bottom, right until it hits, like, say, 200 pixels out or so. That'll be kind of the maybe 250 pixels out will be the break point. Maybe 250 pixels out from the right side will be the break point kind of here for how far they can go. And about 30 pixels over will be the stop point for this side over here, where they have to stop on this over here part. So with those parameters in mind, let's set those into effect real quick. And let's get rid of that annoying little red box. I keep saying I'm going to do that, and I never do it. Add rect2. Problem solved. Yay, the little rectangle's gone. Okay, so now that that's done, let's add those parameters real quick. So if, um, no, we don't care. Don't throw me in air. Okay, good, I didn't throw him in air. So if direction one on paddle one is up, then if paddle one dot get location, 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 dot get, and that'd be the y value, dot get y, yeah, dot get y is greater than zero, then we run that. So let's test that real quick to make sure we did that right. Up, and bloop, it stops. Perfect, perfect. It's always anticipation until it actually works like that. So we're good there. And that is the top, yes, and it's right on it, perfect. Now, uh, oh, i got to bring it back up to explain what I was going to explain. When you say uh, get location, it's the location of this top left corner. So the, uh, this top left corner here is where it's checking location. So when we hit the bottom, it actually won't be above the application height until this top little point crosses. So we got to say, um, basically, uh, this point plus this length here. So that's actually really a lot more simple to do than it sounds. We say if it's going down, then if paddle one dot get location dot get uh, y plus, and then our little uh, paddle um, width here, which is uh, or sorry paddle height here, which is 60 plus 60 is less than window height and sometimes you have to tweak this just because of little various things eating up a little bit of space so you gotta just tweak them until they work right but boom there we go that seems to be working perfectly I like it I like it a lot in fact I could probably keep doing this for another five minutes and just being happy however that uh, tutorials are kind of a bit time sensitive although it doesn't seem like it when I do them because I take so long to do stuff more water. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, and actually uh, what we probably should do is make this an actual parameter up here. And th In fact, I think I'll do that right now. Public static final int paddle one height equals 60 and public static final int paddle one width equals 15. And then we'll just do the same for paddle 2, paddle 2 height, paddle 2 width. That way if we wanted to make one person have a bit of an advantage, maybe they really suck at the game or something, we could allow them to have uh, some kind of extra uh, width, or actually height would probably be more useful, uh, extra height to give them more area for the ball to collide with. Whatever. Probably not going to worry about really changing those, but it's just good practice to make uh, things class variables if you can. So this would be paddle one height, paddle one width, and paddle two height, paddle two width. And then here, plus paddle one width. There we go, perfect. And now left and right. So, um... We don't really want the paddle to be able to go all the way 
to the window, we want like the window plus 30 pixels. So if paddle1.getLocation.get x this time, yeah, x plus, let's just say 30 is the padding on the side. I'm just going to use 30 as a constant. I'm not going to set it as a class variable. So say 30, more water. Let's say 30 is our, our um, kind of padding on the left side. D uh, dot get x plus 30 is greater than 0. Now this is where it gets a little bit hairy, so let's make sure that worked. Whoops. Looks like I screwed something else up while I was doing this. Okay, paddle height and width. These should be reversed. Paddle 1, 1 width, paddle 1 height. How silly of me. How silly. And paddle to width, paddle to height. Okay, let's run this again real quick. Now we're good. And it appears as if our little collision isn't working. And, oh, the reason is because we have to subtract 30 instead of adding 30. Uh, just think about it logically. If you subtract 30, oh, plus minus 30, whoa, what are we doing here? Uh, minus 30, if you get the x value and say it's 50 to the right and then you subtract 30, it's now at 20. So you have 20 to go until you hit the padding. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it's not really programming related. It's just kind of the general logic. So now let's try this. Boom, boom, boom. I like my padding here. 30 pixels looks perfect. So up, collision, down, collision, wait, collision, and left collision. And with this thing, colli oh. mm, the collision stopped working on that. We'll have to fix that. And, oh, we actually we never did the collision. Sorry, don't mind me. Okay, so this collision apparently is a little bit off now. And let's look at why. Down plus paddle width is smaller than window height. Plus paddle one width. Paddle one height. Apparently I don't know the difference between width and height in what I'm doing. So let's test this again. Yes! Okay, and side to side, hits there, and we'll do our border here now. So we'll do 200. 200-ish. Uh, I'm just going to put it at um, 200 for this little corner. Uh, that's really the easiest way to do it, even though it's not perfect. So then, if paddle1.getLocation.getx is greater than... actually is less than... actually, yeah, you know what, we'll do plus paddle1width is less than 200. Let's just say 200. Then we run this here. And we bloop, bloop collision, bloop collision, and boop. Whoa, 200 is way too close. What was I thinking with 200? Let's do 350. 350. 350 going once, going twice. Sold the man in the tuxedo. Yeah, that's more like it. Perfect. 350. 350. Actually, we could make it at um, 500 and actually make them able to meet. Let's do that real quick. Let's let's do 490 so they can't touch, but they can come very close. So that'd be like this. It'd stop right around there. Perfect. And uh, I think that'd be a good kind of range. I also want to increase the speed. So I, I'm just going to, the easy way to do that is to increase our refresh. See, the way we did refresh, pause, refresh. So, change that to 1. That should go five times faster. And whoa, that's fast. I like this. Suddenly I feel like the paddle width is not, or the paddle height is not quite big enough. So let's change the paddle height real quick. Uh, paddle one height. Let's do 120 and 120. Oh, much better, much better. I like this, I like this, I like this. See, that's why it's so nice having class variables, because you can just change it like that instead of having to go back through the code and change everything. I like that paddle width. I like the speed. I feel like this is something that I could work with. The collisions still seem to be working perfectly fine. So let's get them working uh, just fine for uh, the yellow paddle. Sorry this tutorial is running so long.
We're almost done here. And I'm almost out of water, so we're going to be ending soon. So now we just apply these exact same things to this one. So I'm just going to copy and paste, copy pasta, as a friend says, and paddle 2. And that one goes here, I'm gonna say, and there's paddle 2, there's paddle 2 height. And then we have this one, which goes in left, 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 going once, going twice, sold, paddle two. And finally, we have a little thing right here. Goes right here. Dot get x plus paddle two width, paddle two. Now if you run this, you'll notice it doesn't work properly, and I'll explain why in just a second. But it can go all the way over here and it can't go past here. Wait a second. It's because it's obeying the same rules as the other one. Now if we wanted to play um, Pong with both of these, ooh, that's cool. This would, In the same area, this would be perfect if they could, like, you know, collide and hit each other and stuff, this would be nice. However, we want this to be on the other side of this line, so we basically have to reflect. Now the top and bottom is still working perfectly fine. However, the left and right is uh, the variable, is the different changing thing. I'm trying to get these to line up, it's kind of annoying me. Close enough. And so, that being said, we gotta change our left and right uh, parameters on this. So, greater than, and, gr wait, no. Sorry, less than still. So this is the right and this is the left, and left than. Change minus to plus, and change plus to minus, and let's start it off and see how it goes. Top bottom looks good, but we lost off the screen. Let's start that again, run it, and it can go all the way, it can't even go left, it can go up, down, and if we try to go right, it goes off the screen. So let's think about this real quick. For left, paddle2.getLocation.getX plus 30 is less than zero. Try is less than 1,000 because that's our right border. So suddenly um, left still does not work. That was for left. So paddle 2.getLocation.getX plus 30 is less than 1,000. Let's do less than 1,000 and 1. And click and it works. So we're good. Now we just got to get the collision on the right side working. So let's do that real quick. And the reason we had to do 1001 is because 30 plus uh, our starting value was exactly at 1000, so it wouldn't let it move. So 1001 just lets it move. Um, but the collision is a little bit off. And actually, let's do. Um, yeah, we are already have our padding in there, which is good. So uh, paddle2.getLocation.getX minus paddle2width is greater than 490. Now we're trying to make sure when it's mo actually, sorry, I'm sorry. When it's moving right, we need to be careful about the 1001. So dot get x minus paddle2width. This should actually be a plus is less than 1001. Right? Let's run this real quick and see. Bloop. Alright, that looks pretty close. Pretty close, I will admit. Pretty close, pretty close. So, plus paddle to width is less than a thousand and one. It's less than... Let's try 901, see what that does. And take it from there. Bloop. Okay, so that puts it out there. So let's change 900 to 980, and that looks like good. And now we just got to change this middle section to actually work properly. So the middle border now will be uh, for the left control, and that'll be dot get x minus 30. No, actually we can get rid of the 30 part. We can get rid of the 30 part because we're talking about the left point on it. And is less than, uh, it should be greater than, 490, we'll do 510 here. 
Let's run this real quick. And bloop, bloop, up, down, everything seems to be working there. These seem to be happy. This can't collide over here, this can't collide over here. Those, thing, those um, paddings look pretty good. Uh, yellow looks a little bit smaller, so let's just edit um, this to 971 and run that again. And that looks a little bit better. Let's spawn the pad a little bit further out when we set its location. Uh, set location, set location, window height minus divided by 2, window height width minus 30. Let's do minus 40 here. A lot of times you'll find when you're developing games, you just go off what looks right instead of what mathematically makes perfect sense sometimes. And this is one of those cases. So, this seems to be working. They can't touch, but, however, they can come very close, so that's good. I like the speed they're going at. They can't go into their gutter. Each one of them has a gutter, and it looks about the same size. I'm pretty happy with the sizing. And we have our collisions to do next time. So, we have... <clears throat> next episode, we have to add a pong ball, and we have to make its physics work, so when it hits a paddle, it starts going in the opposite direction. And, um, that's actually somewhat easier to implement than you'd think, but it's still not exactly easy, because you have to do collision checking, which is kind of a bit of a pain. So at any rate, thank you for joining me. This tutorial's dragged on long enough. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Probably in about a week or so will be the next episode of this tutorial. And uh, Bucket plugin tutorial will probably start two weeks from now. Linux will probably start three or four weeks from now. Uh, just kind of depending on how the schedule lays out. Um, but we're looking at um, definitely early February for the next episode of this. So thank you for joining me, and we will see you next time.